scientists have been tracking a nasty little tick across the country. It's the one that causes Lyme disease. And recently, the parasite has been finding new hosts from coast to coast. Nichols Ogden is a veterinary research scientist with the Public Health Agency of Canada and joins us now in Montreal. And Mr. Ogden, tell me a little bit about the situation of, of these, these little critters, these ticks right across the country. Thanks for asking me to participate. Um, the, uh, at, at the moment, there, we know, or we're pretty sure, there's a, 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 a quite a wide area of southern BC that is affected by the western black legged tick, and, and maybe has been for some time. Probably more concerning for us is the uh, expansion of the geographic range of uh, another important vector of Lyme disease, the eastern uh, black-legged tick, uh, in, uh, which is common in the east and really the cause of most Lyme disease cases in the USA because it's most common in uh, northeastern USA, Connecticut, uh, including Lyme, Connecticut, which is from where Lyme disease gets its name. I always associate Lyme disease with, with deer, that we would get somehow get these ticks from deer, but you're saying that in fact they can, we can get them from other sources. What would they be? Well, actually the deer are important as hosts for the tick, but they're not actually important uh, for uh, the agent of Lyme disease. The agent of Lyme disease is carried by uh, um, uh, little rodents and birds, and uh, it's the immature stages of the tick that transmit uh, the, uh, the, the bacterium from one animal to another. And because the tick isn't that choosy about what it feeds on, it can also then transmit it to us. So would we know there's one on our skin? Does it, does it bite or how would we know and what do we do? It, 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 it does. It's not like a, a, um, a, a, the, the, uh, a mosquito. It doesn't fly up to us and bite and then disappear. The ticks attach to us and feed for several days. Um, and it's a, quite an important kind of public health message is that if we're out in the woods in an area where there is a possible risk of Lyme disease, if we go out uh, after we've gone out into the woods uh, and walking in the, in, in, in the countryside, that we examine ourselves fairly carefully in the shower when we get back and uh, find, and if, if you find a tick, pull it off. Because if the tick is infected um, and uh, you catch it within 36 hours of starting to feed, in most cases you'll prevent the tick transmitting infection. So what are the symptoms if we, we don't manage to get rid of it? Well, the first symptoms appear probably about a week or, or even longer after the tick uh, has bitten. You may get a little red area where the tick has, has, has bitten, but th uh, that's just a, an inflammatory reaction to the tick. But if you are infected, then in most cases, you will get a spreading red ring, which is uh, um, supposedly a classic sign of, uh, of Lyme disease, and that's called erythema migrans. It's a curious kind of rash that's usually greater than five centimeters in diameter. It, uh, it expands gradually uh, for a, uh, a week or more, uh, probably several weeks it can remain, and then it'll disappear. It's, um, uh, it's a curious rash because it's, it doesn't itch in most cases. It's not painful. There's not, not much in the way of pain associated with it. And, uh, and it's just a spreading red area. So uh, basically, so that's the first sign, and, the first and, and sign, then okay. subsequ Go ahead. subsequently, uh, you, the, the, it, it, if, it can develop if it's not treated at that stage into more serious uh, illness, which affects the sort of nervous system. You can get nerve paralysis, uh, problems with the heart, uh, and also arthritis. We have to leave it at that. But thank you so much for your your insight today. Most interesting, Nicholas Ogden. Thank you. Thank you.